One of the most common questions that I get uh, in the comments is about like my setup. Uh, and I think that people ask what my setup is because they think maybe there's something about my setup that would make skating easier for them uh, or that it would suit them better. And in reality, the only thing that uh, is my setup that might benefit you in any, any which way, shape or form is using tech rails because it makes board slides way easier. It makes your board a little heavier, but that's uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, so I'm just going to, instead of telling you what my setup is, even though I'm going to tell you what my setup is throughout the video, I'm just going to give you a little rundown on all the different pieces of a skateboard and what they can do so you can help create your perfect skateboard, like your setup that is like exactly for your skating. Uh, and it's going to be like, instead of giving you like the long and short of it, I'm just going to mostly give you the short of it. And then in the description, if there's something that you feel like you want more details of, uh, I'm just going to link a bunch of Ben DeGrasse videos because he goes into like crazy detail about all this stuff. I'm just going to give it to you from my perspective, from my experience and what works best for me, both now and in all the different versions of skating that I've done because I have been like a rail guy in the past. I used to ride a 775, a 75 actually for two boards in a row uh, when I was a pup. Uh, all the way up to the board that I am going to be setting up today is this one and it's a nine and it's already gripped and I'm very happy about that because I hate gripping boards. But yeah, we're gonna go through pretty much everything. Uh, hopefully this video is not too long. Uh, hopefully I say funny stuff so it's less boring. All right, we're gonna go. So before we get into a lot of the different products and uh, what I recommend and stuff like that, we're gonna go a little bit over some basic specs. Uh, board size, pretty obvious. The thinner your board is, if you're riding a 7.5, you're gonna be quadruple flipping that thing all over the place. If you're riding a bigger board, uh, I either ride an 8.75 or a nine, my board flips a little bit slower. Uh, double flips are not something that I desire to be able to do, so I don't mind sacrificing making them a little bit easier. I mean, the only time I would do a double flip is someone does it in skate, and in all honesty, I'd rather take a letter than flick my ankle that hard. I just don't think that they look that cool. They don't feel that fun. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but personally, I rarely do them. Uh, I was actually debating about saying, play a clip of me doing a bunch of double flip tricks, but I'm not even gonna bother. Um, but something that a lot of people don't pay attention to that isn't necessarily as obvious to people just getting into skateboarding, also look how cute this keen board is. I'm starting a little wall hanger wall behind me so it's less boring when I film in my room. But uh, wheelbase, the wheelbase is the measurement from this inside bolt hole to this inside bolt hole. And what that tells you is where the trucks are gonna sit, which will decide how steep this goes. Cause if it's further in this way, it's gonna be a little bit more shallow. If it's further out for like a longer wheelbase, it's gonna be a bit more steeper, which means it's gonna take a little bit more effort to pop. It's gonna be a little bit slower and delayed. And uh, in my opinion, I think it gives you a little bit more power though. Cause it goes up steeper. I feel like I can ollie higher with like a wider wheelbase but it takes a little bit more effort. What I do like about it is it forces you to slow down a little bit when you're like popping, not your actual speed. Um, so front side ollies for me and back side ollies for me on transition, uh, if you know this about me, I have a lot of trouble getting above the coping unless I plan to smack my tail. It's like a mental thing for me. Like I have to smack my tail, otherwise I'm not gonna go very high at all. Uh, but with this, being able to like slow it down, I can ollie closer to the coping, even though it's like, milliseconds of difference and it could totally be a placebo effect but andy anderson also says this uh the wider wheelbase makes timing your snap a little bit easier because it's just that that slight delay i mean it, it's enough to get something out of so personally I like a wider wheelbase but if you have a smaller wheelbase uh it's just gonna be a little bit more responsive it's gonna be quicker if you're learning flip tricks if you're just starting and you want to get into the kick flips or sixty flips and all that stuff i recommend having a smaller wheelbase a smaller wheelbase would be closer to the 14 inch wheelbase uh, and further from, I guess, 15 inches. So 14 in, in that realm. Uh, I'm not the best with the numbers here. I'm kind of just vaguely remembering things that I've heard in the past. Because I don't really look at those numbers as much as I say, hey, is this a wider wheelbase? It is? Okay, give me that exact size and shape for eternity. I am a creature of habit and I don't switch things up a lot. Another thing that I look at is uh, nose size. So here's a Palperalta eight and a half. Uh, the reason that I wasn't a huge fan of the eight and a half of this particular shape, because they have multiple shapes, is I didn't like the sharpness of this nose. It's not very round. And in my head, if it's pointier, it's more room for my nose, for my foot to drag on the ledge. And I'm a sucker for front side nose slides and nothing sucks more than doing a front side nose slide. You drag your heel, you fall backwards, you end up sitting on the ledge and it's just a terrible feeling. So though I think Pal Peralta makes great boards, this particular shape, uh, I'm not a fan of, but also this particular shape with a sharper nose and tail makes 360 flips, scoop kind of 
quicker. So there's a give and take towards everything. Here's an example. It's actually another wall hanger. Uh, my buddy, Miles Willard, his uh, pro model board for Toy Machine. This board particularly has a very wide, like a much wider nose, uh, kind of sticks out. This is my ideal kind of nose. Why it's on a Toy Machine and a Pal Peralta board, I don't know, but it is. There's a monument in Baltimore, that's where I'm from. Creation the shape of the nose. If you look at it and it looks pleasing, that's one thing, but think about what kind of trick you're gonna do with it. If you do a lot of nose slides and a lot of tail slides, maybe you check the size of the board, see how much your foot hangs off. That's something that I do. Uh, it's also one of the reasons that I went up to the 875 for Pal Peralta or the nine inch boards because their nose and tails, when you get to a board that big, they're so large. Like. Even if it was a narrow version of an 875 nose, it's gonna be round and big enough for my foot to not drag. So that's another reason. Like if you're not, like I love flip tricks. I do a lot of flip tricks, but if you're not like a kind of flip trick guy, I honestly think keep stepping up sizes until you find like the maximum size that doesn't affect your tricks. And it's gonna be, in my opinion, a little bit easier to skate because you have more board to land on. That's just my rundown. Uh, so now we're gonna get into setting up my board. Uh, quick rundown about grip tape. Uh, mob grip tape is the only grip you should ride. If you ride anything else, you're not, I'm not even gonna say that. Mob grip tape is the only grip tape that I think is consistently grippy and all grip tape gets less grippy over time, but mob grip tape starts off so grippy that it still works. In my opinion, Jessup grip is, is probably like in second place of the main brands, but it's less grippy. They do have a new grippier version of Jessup that I haven't tried. If uh, you've tried it, let me know in the comments, I guess. I literally would use Grizzly Grip to wax a ledge because that stuff's so slick, it's ridiculous. I'm not a fan of that grip tape, uh, though it's cool that skaters started a grip tape company. I'm not a big fan of uh, the product. And that's kind of my rundown of grip tape. There's not that much to it. If there's some random grip tape companies out there, because I know there's a million of them, and one of them makes grip tape that's pretty grippy, let me know because, actually, no, don't let me know. I like my grip tape. I'm just sticking to what I know. Creature of habit, remember? Just went to LB Skate Shop, uh, bought some stuff because I'm really intelligent and I left my skateboard at a spot when I went to the bathroom and I thought everyone was gonna keep hanging out at the spot and they didn't and someone stole my board. So we're gonna set up a bit of a, not a Christmas complete because I did skate this nine inch board in that mono a mono contest. Uh, which was the only time I skated it. I had her hurt and actually I did a couple rock to fakies and that was it. So it's basically a brand new board. So for trucks, uh, different trucks will affect how your board pops as well because the shape of the trucks are different. Uh, I don't remember the exact specs uh, specifically as far as like thunder and independent. Like I think it's like if you have thunders, it makes your board a little steeper because they're set in more. That could be wrong. If you want to know exactly what it is, once again, I'll link Ben DeGrasse's, uh, he did an entire video on I think truck shapes and like how that affects. So if you want to get into those details, but personally, uh, I go by what truck turns the best because you're going to get to used to whatever. And in my opinion, the most consistent turn is independence. Ace, from what I understand, turns sharper. I haven't tried them yet, but to a degree that doesn't necessarily work better. Because there should be like, a point where you can lean a little bit and not a lot happens, but when you like really give into it, then it's gonna turn, which is good when you jump down a set of stairs and maybe you land a little heel side. You don't wanna jump down a set of stairs and veer off all crazy. Uh, you wanna have a little bit of stability in the middle. And with independent, I think it is the perfect amount of turn. They do turn way better than just about every other truck. I mean, I, I guess you could argue that Thunder turns about as good, but I think Indies turn a little bit better. And I ride the mids. The Mindy's, uh, because I don't know. I, I like being a little bit closer to the ground because I'm scared of heights. Honestly, I think it helps my timing of my pop a little bit better. I always would ghost pop my nollie flips and switch flips, and I still do it sometimes, but it's just not as often because my tail gets to the ground a little bit sooner. Once again, maybe placebo effect. Regardless, figured I'd mention it. Uh, as far as width of your board and size of your trucks, I like to make my trucks ever so slightly bigger. Uh, so like if I, when I was riding eight and a half, I was riding uh, 159s because I like being able to peek out over the side of my board and see exactly where my wheel is for one trick. It's it, literally, I started doing it so I could lock into front side crooks more often because I kept missing and getting in front nose over and over and over again. Or sometimes I would overlock it and do like the heel side front crook pinch from 2001 that people did for some reason because we didn't know any better. And with uh, slightly wider trucks, it was a little bit easier to aim. But I didn't want to step up to a bigger truck than 159. So now that I'm on 875, I'm still riding 159s. And uh, I don't know, I have front crooks kind of locked down in my head enough that it makes sense. But I don't think it's a bad idea to ride trucks slightly wider than your board or the same size. Riding trucks smaller than your board 
I imagine it would make your board flip faster, but not in a good way. Uh, I think it would just make it kind of more awkward. And yeah, you want, you want it to be the same size or one size bigger, in my opinion. Another little explanation about different truck types. I think I butchered that word explanation, but we're gonna leave it in there. Uh, with crux and trucks that aren't independent or ace or uh, thunder, they seem to have way more straight before it has that give. So the way I always describe it is, aces kind of would turn more on a triangle, right? Like, so it's balanced here and it just, it's it's sharp. It's like, it's this or this. And then independence has a little bit more of a taper this way with a flat spot in the middle. So it's pretty sturdy and then it gives. Trucks like Crux are more of like a tapered rectangle in a way where you can land and you will continue to roll straight until you really bend into it. Which uh, makes sense that people who like to jump down really big stuff, like take a lot of impact, would skate something like that. So if that's something you're into, I would recommend maybe something like Crux. Um, as far as like transition and like turning sharp, I don't think that they're the best trucks, but I mean, they, they work. They reworked their trucks somewhat recently to where they're uh, a lot more turning. But like trucks like Destructo and stuff like that, don't even bother. They don't turn at all. You, you will literally be dragging your toes on the ground, leaning toe side, and those things will just be coasting straight. Um, that's me saving you a couple dollars. As far as Venture and Tensor, I haven't skated those in years, so I can't say one way or the other. I know some people swear by Ventures, so I don't know. Can't really talk too much about those. Once again, link in description. I'm sure Ben talked about it. Hardware, uh, it kind of matters. Uh, if you don't ride riser pads, uh, you should ride seven eighths or one inch. Uh, the reason someone might want to ride a one inch is just because if your nuts keep falling off on you, uh, you have that much more time to tighten it before you lose it in the skate park. Someone hits it and scrapes their knee and it's all your fault. Also skating uh, part of the seven hardware army is pretty annoying. So I ride seven eighths. I'm trying Allen key for the first time ever. I've never skated Allen key hardware, at least not on purpose. There was definitely times where I was scrounging on the skate shop floor because I was extremely broke. Uh, and I would just have like a mismatch of all different types of hardware, which is really fun to switch your board because Lord knows no one ever has an Allen key. But luckily when you get the independent ones, it comes with a little Allen key. I'm pretty sure that I lie. I think it has an Allen key in there. We're gonna find out right now. Usually when you buy Allen key hardware, they give you Allen key because they're like, no one has Allen keys. Everyone has Phillips. And yes, most T-tools have the Allen key on the L, but everyone loses the L, so what's the point? Yep, it comes with a little Allen key. Perfect, yay. And if you ride risers, you know, same deal, like ride an inch or an inch and a quarter. And uh, what's the purpose of risers, you may ask? I guess it makes wheel bite a little less likely because your board sits a little further off the truck. Uh, maybe you have a sharper turn because you can dig more in. I Honestly, I used to skate riser pads because I didn't know any better. I just thought that you were supposed to ride them. And uh, now that I don't skate riser pads, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Haley, my girlfriend, rides riser pads. I don't even know what her reasoning is for it. I think she just likes it. I think it's, she's just used to that height. Whereas me, I don't want height off of the ground. Uh, another thing that I would definitely recommend when you set up boards is mark which one's your front truck and which one's your back truck. Cause when you take that thing apart, Lord knows you're just gonna set it on the counter, get your shit ready and then be like, oh wait, I don't know which one's the front and the back. And then you have to like examine where your grinds are and you're like, that's the front 5 I think. But then you look at the crooked grind mark and you're like, oh maybe that's the front 5 mark. And unless you're doing like, a lot of very specific grinds. I'm sure Jamie Foy can look at a truck and be like, yep, front crook, there we go, and throw that in. But for a lot of other people, uh, especially if you only skated those trucks for like a couple days, you're not gonna have enough marks to indicate it. Uh, another thing to look at is uh, Smith grind marks, which is usually my go-to. It is extremely convenient that someone like uh, Ben, who has like a serious carpentry background, uh, like goes through and ran all the specs of all the different board sizes and shapes and trucks and dimensions and stuff like that. And I know what you're thinking, Dan, you're wearing a Keen Ramp shirt. Didn't you used to build skateboard ramps for a living? Yeah, I did, but I'm also an idiot. So uh, I don't have a ton to say about different things with the board. Cause I mean, I started skating before I even learned about any of those measurements. And plus it already exists on the internet. So I'd rather just give you my take. All right, here we go. First couple turns using Allen key. Let's see how I feel about it. The reason that I tried Allen key though was uh, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit harder to strip out. Personally, I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be harder for me to strip. And I strip my hardware all the time because I'm always in a hurry and I have really fumbly fingers. Uh, so like I'll be using my impact drill, which is also probably not the best move for me to use an impact drill. Uh, and yeah, I just strip the crap out of these are the Andrew Reynolds hollows. Wouldn't it be sick if Andrew Reynolds invented the impossible and it could be called like a Reynolds wrap? I'm not putting that in. Yes, I am. Also, these trucks are hollows. The slight weight difference between hollows and not hollows isn't something that I really notice. 
Uh, I didn't get hollows intentionally, but some people think that it makes skating easier. I don't know if it actually does. Once again, possibly placebo effect. So maybe if I switch to a heavier truck, it'd be more noticeable. But when I switched from regulars to hollows, I didn't really notice. I don't know. You know, and if you're hearing different things about different sizes and shapes, you're like, oh, that would be good for this, and this would be good for that. Uh, I think it's becoming a little bit more common to have a plethora of skateboards for like different types of skating. Uh, I know like a lot of people have like vert boards and stuff like that. So if you're a spoiled little shit who has like, you know, all the money in the world and you can just like get a bunch of stuff or you're sponsored, um, having multiple boards is probably a good idea. Uh, as for a lot of people though, that's not an option. Pretend I didn't say anything because I definitely only had one setup my entire life. But now that I have like access to a bunch of boards, uh, actually I still only have one setup because I hate setting up boards. Like I know so many people who are like, yeah, it's therapeutic to set up a board, but I'm always so anxious to like go skate that I'm like, oh, like just get put together faster. And I'm always dropping nuts. Cause I'm just like too, like, I, I just want to stop setting it up and just start skating uh, immediately. Did I, oh, for, for a second, I thought I put one on backwards. I would not put it past me. Okay, now wheels. Uh, time to state some obvious things. Soft wheels, they're great for rough ground, but they don't slide too good and they also sound terrible. Hard wheels, they're good for slides, and they suck on rough ground, and they sound great. Bones and Powell are coming out with a soft wheel that slides good and skates like a hard wheel, but it's actually soft so you can ride over rough ground. My issue with it is I don't like the sound, and when I use certain grinds on flat bars, since they're softer wheels, it digs in a little bit more, so I don't think any sort of real deep pinchy trick, you just grind a little bit slower. Not enough to make it so you can't do the tricks. They still work. The, tr the, the wheels work absolutely wonderfully. Uh, but personally, not what I prefer. Uh, I always ride this exact formula from Acid. It's uh, the REM formula. The reason I like it is because Acid also has the formulas to not flat spot, which is something that came out not super long ago. Uh, and what's great about these is even like the Bones STS when you do tail slides and stuff like that, they're pretty quiet. Um, whereas these just screech so loud, you know, I think, uh, Spitfires, it's kind of like a deeper, like, Ugh, which, uh, I'm just less into. I like, I like a really loud wheel. They don't flat spot. They feel great. They have good shapes. I think a lot of people, when they have it like cut in here, they do it too sharp and this edge will flake. I just really like, like the angles that these are cut in and they're just like basic white. They do color wheels too. I always ride white wheels, obviously ride whatever colors you want. I do, I have heard things about dies being in wheels, making them slide a little different, flat spot a little easier. I don't know if that's true, it's just what I've heard. And yes, 52 millimeter, the bigger the wheel, the smoother the ride, uh, but also the more weight. Also the thinner the wheel, the less weight. Um, I like a medium thickness, I guess, a, a decent girth to my wheel. Uh, and I like 52 millimeters or 51 if I can get my hands on them. Not everyone's running 51s though, so getting my hands on 51 is a little bit more rare, but 52 is a good size. Uh, I think the most common size right now is 53s and 54s. If you're on the East Coast or a foreign country that gets weather, which is basically everywhere that's not California, I recommend riding 53s or 54s. If you're like me and you live in California and you're super spoiled, uh, I recommend 52s or 51s and definitely ask the chemical wheels, in my opinion, do make the best wheel. And that's not just because I ride for them. I actually was riding these before I rode for them. So there, you'd think I would say bones because I ride for Powell and they're in the same camp, but no. I would say bones are, Actually, Land Shark's my second favorite wheel, and then Bones. Land Shark, I don't know if they're still around, but they made a really good batch of wheels back in the day. I don't know if they changed the formula or not, or if they're still around, but they had some good wheels. Now we're gonna talk about bearings. Oh, a bets don't matter. Oh, bearings, loop your bearings. Okay, here's the real deal about bearings. Riding anything that is not these is not worth it, money-wise. I think it makes way more sense to spend $50, $60 on a set of bearings but bearings that work really well and that you can clean fairly easily and then reset them up. Like I have to set up new bearings now because my entire complete was stolen. But with these, I can take these out, I can pop the shields off, I can clean them, lube them, throw them back in my wheel, and then I have brand new bearings again. And I've tried, I swear, I'm not, I swear to God, I'm not trying to knock every other brand, but I've tried Bronson and I've tried, you know, I used to get, you know, FKD and Rockstar and Lucky and you know, I, I've tried a million different bearing companies and honestly, these are the only ones that have been consistently good. And if you're trying to save some money, uh, I would recommend getting like the regular Bones Reds. I think they're like 
20 bucks or something like that. They're definitely not gonna last as long as these, but they will last longer than most other bearings. Even if the other bearing companies, like these are our Swiss, and people hear Swiss and they think of bone Swiss and like, these are gonna be great bearings and then they're ass. Uh, I've tried Swiss of a bunch of other bearing companies. I do wanna try the underlay Swiss because a friend of mine says that they're actually good bearings. I don't know if that's true. I don't even know what they cost, but I'm gonna see if I can finagle a pair of Swiss out of uh, Joey Brzezinski next time I see him. But uh, I highly doubt that they compare to these. And if you're really trying to uh, flex on your friends, you can spend $126 on some ceramics, which I would not necessarily recommend anyone do. For example, they make sense for someone like Matthew who goes as high out of a quarter pipe as physically possible. And if you have a bearing that's gonna spin faster or work better, he could probably go a little bit higher. But for the rest of us, just get these, just get these. That's all I'm gonna say. I know a lot of people uh, wonder about washers and stuff like that, which are, you know, these, these little guys right here that come on your trucks. I use them. Also, if you get the spacers, some, some trucks will come with spacers, like nicer versions than these. Uh, I'll pop those in too, because they just make uh, the friction in your wheel a uh, little bit less hectic, at least has the technology idea behind them. Whether that works or not, I don't know, but I do know that when I have those, maybe my wheel bearings last longer. I don't know. I go through bearings really crazy because I always skate really dirty spots, but my opinion, oh, that, you know what? I would say that I never blow out bearings. They never like explode. They just get shitty. So maybe that is why my bearings don't explode. Like some of my friends where their balls go flying everywhere because I use those little spacers, which are the black things, which I don't have. They're, they don't come with these. They come with their regular Swiss uh, and someone stole them. So uh, when I tighten my wheels down, I do have, have a little bit of play like this sound right here. Just that, that's it. Any, any more, I feel like it's too much friction and then any tighter, I feel like I blow up my bearings faster. I think that's common practice. I think most skaters do that. It is kind of awkward, like as I'm filming this, like sort of not trash talking, but talking about products that like I don't like or I don't think is as good. And like now I have like enough friends that like work, ride for, or sometimes own some of these companies. And it's kind of like, oh man, like, it's almost like easier to do like the whole YouTube thing if, you, if you're like not involved with anyone in the skate industry at all, because then you can just say whatever you want to say. Uh, I'm still gonna tell you how I feel about companies, but it's definitely like, oh, man, like I kind of just dogged that company and that, and that company is the reason that my friend can pay his rent. But regardless, Dan, do you have anything to say about shape boards? Uh, yeah, I have something to say about shape boards. I think uh, they don't really do anything. If your board doesn't have a nose and you can't do no slides or crooked grinds, congratulations. There goes 20% of possible skateboard tricks. Uh, if you have a board with an awkwardly shaped nose or whatever, a lot of times it just looks cool to look down at. Most people just do it for aesthetic. They don't really add anything to your skating. If you look at Andy Anderson's board where he had it like, basically he engineered it to be good for like all of these different things, freestyle and like, you know, he's the concaves and the weights a certain way and stuff like that. That's a pretty rare thing. I think if you buy a welcome board, they're all just skateboards where they're just like, oh, let's make the nose uh, octagon. And that's that's all that there is to it. My favorite board shape of all time is the uh, Jason Adams black label board where it was a pointy nose to where like if you sacked your board, you would die. Uh, that board was sick. And what was cool about it is uh, he would do like nose slides on handrails and stuff like that with the nose where like crooked grind, like big rails. And like you could see in the photo, like this sharp pointy tip sticking out over the other side. Probably counterproductive for doing the tricks, but uh, boy, it looked cool. Bearings that are like clear on one side and this on the other side. The colored side should always go that way. So when you put your wheel on, it's gonna be on the outside. I have a friend who's been skating for many years and uh, turns out they didn't know that until I pointed it out to them and they were a full grown adult. So there you go. I feel like I covered just about everything. I'm gonna do a little bonus tidbit though. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about deck rails cause I write them. I feel like a lot of people don't know how they really work. Uh, they don't know where to, exactly to put them on their board in other words. Uh, and I'll explain it to you cause that's also a preference thing right now. The further in towards the middle of the board you put them, the easier it is gonna be able to transfer to other like grinds using the teeter technique, which is where you lean heel side or toe side to lift it up. Uh, the further out it is, the more sturdy your slide's gonna be because it's a wider space between them. It's gonna be a little bit easier to control. It's also gonna make it a lot easier for to keep yourself from shifting this way or that way as you're sliding. You're gonna be very uh, kind of just like centered. So more play here more stability here. You also, the closer to the middle that you uh, put it, it seems to slide a little faster and something that everyone should do that a lot of people don't do. You want your deck rails to be able to fit between these two uh, and less is more because if you have your deck rails a little bit in like this, 
This is where my wheel bite mark is right there. That means that the wheel actually comes about this far over. So right here, that's gonna be touching my deck rail, which means I'm gonna get wheel bite a lot sooner. A lot less turn is needed for me to get wheel bite. We don't want that. We want our deck rails to be away from the wheels. So a lot of times I actually chop my deck rails to guarantee that that will not happen. And there's also been a little bit of minor talk that I may or may not be in cahoots with BevUp and Ace, and we might do a deck rail company. Sean possibly too. Sean, you wanna be in on this? Probably not gonna watch this video, but if you do, you know what to do. Uh, Cause I think that this right here can be improved on, both in thickness and size and shape. And we're all deck rail riders because we all like sliding 6,000 feet on a curb. Uh, and to do that with a wooden board, well, it would probably destroy your skateboard and it would also slide a lot slower. So, that's my video, I think. I'm gonna go skate.